Hello, everybody. So looking at our first stage of the revolution today. So the National Assembly, uh, the first stage of the revolution, the revolution finally beginning. We have a timeline here. Uh, we're going to talk about the Estates General convenes, the Tennis Court Oath, the storming of the Bastille, uh, abolishing the feudal system, the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen, and the Declaration of Rights of Women and Citizen, also the Women's March and the Constitution of 1791. So a lot to discuss here in stage one. A lot is going on. Um, when we're looking at the National Assembly, the first thing that I want to talk about is just this quote right here in yellow. Um, this is from uh, Emmanuel Joseph Saez, uh, What is the Third Estate? little excerpt here. The plan of this book is fairly simple. We must ask ourselves three questions. What is the third estate? Everything. What has it been until now in the political order? Nothing. What does it want to be? Something. So that really references the estate system that has existed um, in France for so long and the imbalance, the injustice. So they are everything. They are 97% of the population. They are nothing in the political world. They have zero political power. Um, and what does it want to be? It just wants to be something. They just want to have something. So the National Assembly is um, set up around the estate system, where the first and second estate will each get one vote. And when it comes to a vote, the first and second estate will always vote together. The third estate will have one vote for themselves, and the third estate will always be outvoted. So it's this imbalance of power that we see uh, that really starts to frustrate the third estate as they feel as though they have no voice, no political power, because they do not have a voice or political power. So what the third estate does is they form their own government. They form the National Assembly, um, and they do so on a tennis court because the building where the government convenes was closed intentionally to prevent the National Assembly from convening. Um, the National Assembly exists wherever its members are gathered. And on the tennis court, uh, the National Assembly members uh, swore this oath um, that until the constitution of the realm is drawn up and fixed upon solid foundations, that they will not separate themselves from the National Assembly and that they can assemble wherever um, they need to in order to get the job done. Shortly after the tennis court's oath, we have the storming of the Bastille. Now, the storming of the Bastille uh, is recognized today as the Independence Day in France. And what the Bastille is, is it is a uh, government building that houses prisoners as well as um, military supplies. So the Third Estate storms the Bastille to uh, get the military supplies, and they end up uh, murdering the guards and the, some of the prisoners inside the Bastille. And it starts the bloody trend of beheading uh, the enemy during the French Revolution, where they will actually dismember one of the um, main guards on duty, the man in charge of the Bastille, and they will decapitate him and put his head on a spike. And the, the problem that comes is that the National Assembly does not immediately condemn this behavior. And that leads to this type of behavior continuing. Um, the Third Estate has grown so angry that they are in a frenzy. Um, they actually will rip apart the Bastille brick from brick, um, taking it apart and taking pieces as mementos. Um, going back up to our timeline here, just looking at the date, the storming of the Bastille in July of 1789. In June of 1789 was the tennis court oaths. Um, then we have the decree to abolish the feudal system. The National Assembly will abolish the feudal system, uh, effectively abolishing uh, the estate system that is in place. We will have some first and second estate members join in the tennis court oaths, recognizing that this is where the power is shifting. Um, and uh, hoping to preserve some of them power for themselves. We will also have in August of 1789, um, the Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen is written. And that is to declare the rights of the French men uh, in France. And very important is that there is a lot of Enlightenment influence of natural rights. Um, and issuing a, a limited monarchy is very important. 
We'll also have the Declaration of Rights and Women in Citizen, written by Olympe de Gauche, which attempts to in uh, incorporate the women's perspective in France and show how important the women are. And that leads to October of 1789, where we have the Women's March, where uh, a group of women literally march to Versailles from Paris, and they go to storm the palace and are looking for the queen, Marie Antoinette. And as a result of them storming the palace, Marie Antoinette and King Louis XVI are brought back to Paris. Um, they will no, never return to Versailles. And the third estate, the people, they want the uh, the king and queen in Paris because that's where the people are. And they want to keep an eye on uh, the king and queen. They don't like what they've been doing and they want to make sure that they are right under their noses. Um, and then we will have the Constitution of 1791 issued in October of that year. Um, and that is an attempt to form a limited monarchy, uh, limiting the power of King Louis XVI and attempting to give more power to the people. So stage one is filled with a lot going on here, but hopefully this helped to kind of break up uh, the major events that happen during this first stage of the revolution.